the worst bear attack in Japanese history, where seven people were killed and many injured. This is the Sankebetsu brown bear incident. Viewer discretion is advised. When an animal hibernates, its heart rate and breathing slow down to save energy, and it lowers its metabolic rate since food is scarce during winter. For some animals, they go into a deep sleep and only wake up when it's springtime. For others, they just go on a slow pace and lessen their movement during hibernation. Bears also fall into a deep sleep called torpor. However, unlike true hibernation, bears can easily wake up to defend themselves from predators or in the case of pregnant female bears, to give birth then fall back to sleep again. But what exactly happens when bears are awakened as early as the start of winter? Do they just defend themselves from predators and fall back to sleep afterwards? Hokkaido, northern Japanese island, home to Uzuri brown bears. Winter has just begun. In November 1915, in Sankibetsu district of Hokkaido, it was a typical winter morning for the Ikeda family. The small community has just recently settled in the area, having manually cleared a part of the wilderness and built for themselves their own huts to form a new little town. Being new to the wild, encounters with wild animals are not unexpected. In fact, these new settlers were on constant lookout for bears who might not have been delighted to know that they now have to share their territory. It was the loud snort of their panicked horse that caught the attention of the Ikeda family which immediately shifted their senses to the unwanted presence of a large brown bear feeding on their freshly harvested corn. This first close encounter did not come as a surprise so they quickly went back to their normal routine as soon as the bear quietly left the farm after a good meal. What started to bother the family was the same bear's unusual comeback close to the farm on November 20. This prompted the father to gather his son and two other winter hunters in town. Since then, the four men began to be on a close watch to safeguard their crops. Ten days later, they caught sight of their frequent visitor again and grabbed the chance to shoot the bear before it managed to escape. Having been wounded, drops of blood led the men into following the bear's trail to Mount Onishika. However, a snowstorm prevented them from going further. They gave up their quest and went back on their way, thinking the wounds would have been enough to scare the bear off from messing with humans and their crops. To their horror and regret, the bear proved them wrong when it came back wilder than ever, just over a week after their bloody encounter. On December 9, 1915, in the home of the Ota family, the husband left his wife, Abe Mayo, babysitting an infant and went off to the farm to work. Little did he know it was his last goodbye. Mid-morning, without warning, the bear barged right into their home and attacked the mother and the child. The bear bit the head of the child, killing the innocent one. Mayo then grabbed the firewood and threw it to the bear, but the bear was too strong for her. She was dragged along the woods. The husband came home from the farm, only to find the dead child, with blood all over his house and his wife missing. With no time to waste, a 30-man team was formed the next morning to search and retrieve his wife's body. Not far from the Ota farm, the culprit was spotted. The team quickly grabbed their rifles and fired at the bear. Only one out of five bullets was right on target, allowing the bear to escape. Maya's remains were found buried under the pile of snow underneath the fir tree. Only her head and legs were intact. The rest had been eaten by the hungry animal. Knowing full well that the bear would return for another taste of human flesh, the following night, armed villagers gathered at the Ota farm to keep watch. Meanwhile, another 50 armed guards were on standby outside the neighboring house that belonged to Miyoki Yasutaro. And yes indeed, their hunch was right. The brown bear was back for more that night. Amid the panic, only one managed to shoot the bear, 
but somehow missed it. Upon hearing the commotion, the guards left Miyoki's house to help out at the Ota farm. Only one guard was left at Miyoki's house to protect the number of women and their children who sought shelter there. When the backup guards arrived at the Ota's house, the bear was nowhere to be found. As if aware that the coast was clear, the bear sneaked into Miyoki's house and attacked the women and children gathered there. Yayo, Miyoki's wife, was just preparing a meal for everyone when suddenly the bear came and hunted everyone down. One thing led to another, the cooking pot flipped over and the oil lamp fell, putting out all the fire and bringing the whole house to complete darkness. Panic heightened, Yayo tried to escape with her sons, one on her back and the other beside her. As they were running for dear life, she got tripped by the sun beside her, so the bear caught up with them and started attacking them. It was until the lone guard stole the attention of the bear as he was trying to hide behind the furniture that gave Yayo and her children the second chance to run away. The guard was brutally attacked and the bear became more aggressive, killing two young boys and another boy badly injured. As though hungry for more, the bear shifted its focus on a pregnant woman in the corner and killed her. Later on, it was said by the surviving witnesses that the woman pleaded with the bear to spare her child. Needless to say, the bear was without mercy. Yayo, having escaped heavily wounded, called out the armed guards who were just returning from their failed hunt at the Ota farm. Approaching the house, the guards could still hear the bear and all the chaos inside a completely dark home. Initially, they planned to burn the house down, but Yayo disapproved of the idea with a little hope that some may still be alive inside. The guards then divided into two groups, positioning themselves at the front door and the others securing the back of the house. They started attempting to catch the bear's attention with loud shouts and banging of the door. It worked. However, they shot their guns in panic and misfired. As a result, they lost the bear again. Miyoki, having arrived at the scene from a trip and learning of the tragedy, which caused the lives of six people in just two days, went to ask for help from Yamamoto Heikichi, an expert bear hunter. When Yamamoto heard the story, he identified the bear to be Kesegake, who has been believed to have previously killed three other women. Yamamoto initially declined the request as he had already exchanged his guns for alcohol and was no longer into hunting. Two days later, the police from the next town heard of the tragedy and sent off six snipers to help in the hunt, including Yamamoto. The bear didn't appear that night even after the attempt to lure the bear using the dead bodies of the victims, a plan that was objected by the Ota and Miyoki families. The following day, on December 13th, the bear once again appeared at the Ota family home taking all their food and even that of the nearby homes and stores before retreating back to the forest. That night, up to 60 armed men began to search the forest to hunt the bear down. The guards positioned at the bridge noticed some movement and they fired shots, but once again failed to kill the bear. The next morning, the team found blood marks at the other end of the bridge. Together with two other men, Yamamoto followed the blood's trail determined to hunt the bear down. Finally, they found Kesagake, the brown bear, resting under the oak tree. Yamamoto closed in 20 yards from Kesagake and proving his expertise, killed the target with only two shots. One bullet hit the head and the other right at the heart. It was December 14th when the fatal attacks have ultimately come to an end. Kesagake weighed almost 750 pounds and was around 9 feet tall. The bear's stomach was still full of human remains. Three years later, the youngest son of Miyoki died due to his injuries. The other injured survivors eventually recovered. Naturally, bears do not hunt and kill humans. They only attack, though always fatal, when humans get in their way of their food or become a threat to their cubs. The process of deforestation has also pushed the bears away from their natural food, bringing them to look for food in human premises. 
the brutal violence of Kesagake was also believed to be caused by having been awakened early. In this tragic case, it has become the worst animal attack Japan has ever known. To this day, a shrine called the Sankibetsu Brown Bear Incident Reconstruction Location stands in memory of those who died. Thank you for watching this story. If you like this video, please consider hitting the like button to help with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe so you won't miss our weekly upload. And finally, if you have any story suggestions, drop a comment and we will try our best to cover it. Once again, thank you and we'll see you next time.